Standard. It's bad. I think we can all agree. Hey, it's Deb from SBNTG, by the way. We like it. A magic. I have a cat with me. Her name's Chicken. But anyway, we're here to talk a little bit about Standard today, which is we do that a lot on this channel. We still do it a surprising amount considering every single comment is like, I don't play Standard anymore, but I like this guy. Hey, thanks for that. Now, in case you are one of them peoples, haven't played Standard in a while, this lady is dominating the format over here. Not this lady. I think it'd actually be a great format. If you were everywhere, chicken, if it was nothing but chickens in the format, we would all just, we'd have a good time with that woman, oh, no, baby. No, instead it's this lady over here, who a lot of people during spoiler season was like, she dies to removal. And like, yeah, she, bye chicken. You be your own, you be your own person over there. You don't want to be up here anymore. That's fine. You just swim, you swim away. Hey, a lot of people, uh, including perhaps me a little bit, were like, oh, you just kill her with a removal spell. It's, she doesn't even do anything. It's fine. But it turns out that it's, it's not, it's not fine. Matter of fact, let me uh, get rid of this again. I keep doing that. You don't know why I keep putting poster board up when uh, there's Aunt Viv right there. Maybe someday she'll get a good magic card. That would be nice. But anyway, what are we talking about? Oh, yeah, standard. I still play it for some reason, even though every time you turn around, you see the same two four drops. That's right, two four drops. Turns out Wandering Emperor is also a card. But anyway, I have basically made it my job to play standard at this point. It's the hell that I've chosen for myself. But if I'm going to live down here, I might as well show you the nice parts of it from time to time. So today, we're going to talk about 10 cards that aren't shielded or invoke despair that you probably have completely forgotten existed, actually, that you can brew around in standard right now and actually attempt to have some fun in this wasteland of a format that's right we got 10 cards to show all of you i'm way out of the frame we've got we got 10 cards to show you today that are uh, probably not good i wouldn't say they're good in standard but there are some cool there's some cool cards to brew around that you probably haven't thought about in a really long time so let's look at the top 10 forgotten brew rounds in standard that's the title of the video roll it let's i should be on the couch by now let's go oh here i am on the couch how did i do that i need to remember that i can do that igby's here too by the way if you need proof there's his tail right there anyway let's talk about some magic cards man we haven't done that in long enough i feel like we need to do it every day don't we but we're going to talk about some cards today that uh we haven't talked about uh, in a really long time or in some cases ever but that is not the case <laughs> for our two honorable mentions that i want to get to before we get into the real juice here because the honorable mentions in this video I've talked about a lot. Let's, for one, Heirloom Mirror is a magic card. Hey, welcome back to SBMTG, the Heirloom Mirror channel. I talk about this card too much. This is like the half dozenth time that I've talked about Heirloom Mirror, so I'm not even going to really talk about it here. That's why it's in the honorable mentions. I'm just bringing it up again. It's like this era's chamber century. I just can't get it out of my head. I can't accept the card's not actually great, but it is a fun little build around. You put stuff in your graveyard. It's a thing that draws your cards. It's an artifact. Maybe you do some of that. I don't know. I also wanted to talk in the honorable mentions about Flesh Taker. I know you remember that Flesh Taker exists. Who could forget Flesh Taker? I mean, just one look and you're in love with this thing. You can get lost in its eyes forever. You can also get lost in its basement on a meat hook, I'm sure. But this is just a cool card. Did you remember Flesh Taker, guys? Remember the good days where we saw Flesh Taker during spoiler season? We're like, ooh, yeah, it's still, still a card that's like available to play in standard. And if you're looking for like a sacrifice salad, you could do a whole lot worse. So just Flesh Taker exists, but those are two cards that um you absolutely know exist because you watch my channel. Oh, and if you don't watch my channel, like it's your first time here or something. Never mind. I was going to do like a seductive hay or something, but that would probably get you to click away and never come back. So I'm, I'm going to spare you that. But let's go ahead and get into the actual list, listo here with number 10, Vile Spawn Spider. A Vile Spawn Spider is Simic Colors, just a blue and a green for a 2-3 spider with reach. At the beginning of your upkeep, mill a card. You can pay 2, a green, a blue, tap and sack Vile Spawn at sorcery speed only to create a 1-1 one, one green insect creature token for each creature card in your graveyard. This is actually kind of a nice little package. It feels like each leg does something. I mean, a lot of people like 2 mana 3 twos nowadays, right? You got Tenacious Underdog, you Blood Tithe Harvesters, and blah, blah, blah. They get a lot of love, but... I still like a good old fashioned two mana two three. It still feels good in my heart, especially you slap a keyword ability on it and another line of text that benefits you. You mill a card every turn, and then eventually you can cash it in for like a bunch of one ones, which is 
really sweet, actually, especially if you have access to a couple of anthem effects or something. And it doesn't exile or anything. You, know, you sacrifice it, you can bring it back and sacrifice it again, sacrifice it, bring it back again or whatever. Like each one that you sacrifice and put into your graveyard makes the next one slightly better, too. So just a cool little card that, like, I had completely forgotten was still in standard. I thought this thing actually rotated out, but it's still available to play in standard. And there's a ton of ways to get cards into your graveyard, whether you're playing, like, I don't know, Cemetery Tampering, if you want to play, like, a kind of bad card, but, like, Erborg Lurgoyf can kick and, like, throw stuff into your yard, and that card actually isn't half bad. Like, Old Stick Fingers is a card, too. I mean, like, Soul Tie Graveyard stuff could actually be a nice little deck, and this is a way to, instead of going, like, big with a card like Lurgoyf or Stick Fingers, you get to go wide with, like, all these 1-1s, so... I actually really like this. Some decent defense in the early game. It's got a cool keyword ability. Fuels your strategy throughout the game. Just a nice little dude that people have completely forgotten about. Let's move to number nine, which actually has like some of my favorite art in standard Loki. Let's look at Ominous Roost. This is a three mana enchantment for two and a blue that says when it enters the battlefield or when you cast a spell from your graveyard, you create a 1-1 one, one blue bird creature token with flying and this creature can block only creatures with flying. So it sucks that the bird can only block some things, but that still means it can block more things than like a Raven Man bird. <laughs> Those can't block nothing. So I don't know. Step up in that department. And it doesn't do nothing. It gives you one of the birds when it ETBs. So that's something for the spikes right there. You can't say it's a do nothing enchantment, but it's pretty easy to play something out of your yard the turn after you play this. Like maybe you played a Faithful Mending on turn two. You played this on three, turn four, Faithful Mending, and you still have mana for something else. Or maybe you could disturb a creature out of your yard that you discarded into there on like turn two or something. I mean, there's a lot of possibilities with a card like this. I've actually played this card on stream before and didn't absolutely hate it. So I imagine now in a format that doesn't have the Meat Hook Massacre to completely kneecap you, right? Then suddenly the card might actually be pretty sweet. And I know that you keep expecting me to make a joke like it's for the birds or like a Hitchcock pun or something like that, but I'm not going to do it. Let's lay all those puns to rest and go on to number eight. Which is laid to rest. This is a four mana enchantment. It's three and a green. Whenever a human you control dies, draw a card. Whenever a creature you control with a plus one plus one counter on it dies, you gain two life. Hey, there's a bunch of like really playable humans in the format right now. And Selesnia humans isn't a terrible deck, right? You get the Catilda that like taps humans for mana or whatever. You get Hamlet Vanguard, which gets plus one plus one counters. This is a natural matter, of course, but you also get to play uh, good cards <laughs> if you want to in that deck. You know, you can play Thalia. She's a human, and in case you want to check, she is. Um, it, it turns out. But there's also, like, Brutal Cathar. You're going to be playing that card anyway. But Hopeful Initiate, that's a human that gets counters incidentally, almost guaranteed. So if it dies, you get a little bit extra life. Uh, Siege Veteran, that's what it's called, the new Luminar Gasparin. That can put a counter on whatever you want, basically, every turn. So that's another way to gain extra life off of this. But mostly you just care about drawing cards when humans die. Well, let's move on to number seven. We've been looking at a lot of silly uncommons on this list so far, and this is the last one for... An entry or two, <laughs> but I want to look at Ancient Lumber Knot next. This is four mana as well. This is two, a black and a green, Golgari colors, for a 1-4 Tree Folk. Now, that seems like a bad stat line, but each creature you control with toughness greater than its power assigns combat damage equal to its toughness rather than its power. Now, I would like to see more people play in this card because it's rooted in some cards that I've really liked to play in the past, but I guess you're going to leaf it to me. <laughs> a, you wanted puns, I'm just going to put them all in one entry. This is a sweet card, guys, you know? I think a lot of people don't even realize this is in standard, but people love Arcady Sabbath and Rolling Stones, I think it's called. There's a bunch of cards throughout Magic history for a long time now that tend to grant this ability, sometimes to defenders or sometimes to creatures with greater toughness than power. Um, and often they don't have to have greater toughness than power. Often it's just your creatures assigned combat damage equal to toughness. But you usually tend to play creatures in those decks that have greater toughness than power. So this isn't really like a huge thing to have. It's like an extra thing you have to build around. It's probably going to do that anyway. So The problem is that this doesn't grant like undefender to all your defender creatures. What do we call that? This doesn't grant attacker to your defender creatures, and that kind of sucks, but there's still plenty of creatures to exploit in standard. I hate that word. Plus, it's already, it's a, it's a mechanic, and so you shouldn't really say, you can exploit this mechanic, because mechanic oh, exploit's already a mechanic. I'm just going to start going in circles, but you get know what I'm trying to say. Uh, anyway, Ancient Lumber Knot. 
Cool magic card. Play with it. But hey, like I said in the last video, I can hear everything you say on the other side of that screen. I've been listening in, and I know you want to move on to number six, which is wiretapping. See, there's a reason I said the things that I just said a second ago. This is five mana, four and a blue for an enchantment with hideaway five. Whenever you draw your first card during each of your draw steps, draw a card. Then, if you have nine or more cards in your hand, you can play the card you hit away without paying its mana cost. Now, this is a five mana do nothing. This this actually, I guess it hides something away, but that doesn't really count as doing something. Our tapping doesn't look very good. It's because it's kind of not, let me just be honest with you. But one thing I do like about this, while we're talking about children, because we're always talking about children if we're talking about standard, it's just how it is. Um, this is on curve with children and uh, is the definition of win more. Did you know win more is a magic term? If you look it up, you basically see this right next to children in the magic glossary of the dictionary. But it's still it's still a thing that I feel like it's worth pointing out. This procs all of your things in the Brothers War that care about drawing an extra card on each of your turn. And there's kind of a lot of them. We already have like Fairy Vandal and stuff, but you know, we got like Thopter Aerialist, Thopter Mechanic, if it's called something. And we got a Gixie and Puppeteer in the set too. So this will just automatically proc those, which is kind of sweet. It's also on curve with Gixie and Puppeteer. And it's on curve with Shieldred. Just a cool little card. Um, I'd like to, especially now with the Brothers War coming out and us getting a lot more of these cards that care about drawing extra cards a turn, I'd like to see try, people try to make it work. Congratulations, you made it halfway down the list. As a prize for doing so, we're going to talk about Ill-Tempered Loner here for a second. This is four mana, two and two red for a three-three human werewolf. And whenever it's dealt damage, it deals that much damage to any target. You can also pay one and a red and have Ill-Tempered Loner get plus two plus zero until end of turn. And the card is daybound. It turns into a four-four werewolf. And whenever a permanent you control is dealt damage. How Pack Avenger deals that much damage to any target. And you pay one in a red to have a good plus two plus so till end of turn. People just kind of assume that you can no longer ill-tempered Lona freestyle and stuff, but you actually can. Take up the shield is still in standard, along with a couple of other cards, right? Like, I'm I'm fairly certain there's there's way more than just this. Yes, as a matter of fact, Angel Fire Ignition. That's the other card that can do it. Took me a second to think of it, but either one of these can give the loner indestructible and lifelink. At the same time, which is key to the combo. In case you've never heard of this, you've just you don't know what I'm talking about right now, and you want to be let in on this wonderful, interesting sounding thing. If you can somehow give Ill Tempered Loner indestructible and lifelink at the same time, and then have him be dealt damage some way, that's why it's a little easier with take up the shield. Not only is it less mana, but it's instant speed. So if your opponent blocks the hermit during combat, you just boom, take up the shield, and then suddenly your opponent's creature is going to be doing damage to your hermit, right? Well, your hermit has lifelink and indestructible. So now it can deal damage because whenever it's dealt damage, it deals that much damage to any target, right? So you just have it deal that damage to itself, right? Well, it's indestructible, so it doesn't, it doesn't die that way. Uh, it has lifelink, so you gain some life in the process. And look at that. It was dealt damage, so you get to deal damage to any target again. I'll just choose the herb. I'll just choose the loner again. Why not do that? Oh, well, look, he was dealt damage, so I gained some life. Uh, and also, he was dealt damage, so he gets to deal damage to any target. I'll choose him. See, I've demonstrated the loop, I think, enough times here for you to get it. So you can do that in standard. You gain infinite life in standard right now. Why aren't you doing it? It's not even hard to do. But anyway, let's move on to number four. This is where we get into some stuff that I actually think is like... <laughs> actual good magic cards kind of that people just aren't playing with so let's look at your ralph next Jer is that how you say Jeral? i'm just gonna call him ralph <laughs> no Jeral visionary stitcher is three mana two and a blue for a one four legendary human wizard zombies you control have flying you can also pay a blue and tap and sack another non-token creature to create an xx blue zombie creature token where x is the sacrificed creature's toughness you know what this is neat with uh ratadabric which is the thing that whenever a legend dies, you get a 2-2 version of the legend, but it's not legendary. You know, that that thing. Um, with that, you see, that makes zombies. That's the thing about that. That card makes zombies. So whenever one of your legends dies, not only do you get a 2-2 copy of it, but that thing flies, which I think is, which is kind of neat. Um, also, you can sacrifice legends to Jeralf and make like an XX thing 
and also make a 2-2, and they both fly if you have a Ratadabra can play. That's a really, really sweet little combo. I've seen people make, like, Esper Legends decks with Ratadabra a few times now, but I'm kind of surprised at the amount of them that some, for some ridiculous reason, <laughs> some oversight, don't have Giralf in them. So, uh, if you weren't aware that, <laughs> that Giralf existed, I mean, I still see people play, like, Blue Black Zombies sometimes, and they don't even play Giralf. Because um, you really aren't a whole lot of reasons to do so. <laughs> Honestly, all zombies you control have flying is a good enough reason to play it. But yeah, yeah, ridiculous combo with Ratadabra. Why aren't people playing the again? Why aren't people playing the card? But hey, everybody, we made it into the top three collectively. Us as one big group. Let's high five. Let's sit cross-legged on the ground. Let's open up our sack lunches, eat our peanut butter and honey sandwiches. Let's keep it pushing here. Number three is yet another blue three drop creature. But this one I somehow like even more than Giraffe. Let's talk about Poppet Stitcher because no one does anymore. You can tell this card is really and truly forgotten because Christmas just came and went and nobody, no content creator did a Poppet Stitcher deck. It's Christmas. It makes sense. But anyway, let's look at let's look at Poppet Stitcher. This is three mana, two and a blue for a two, three human wizard. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, create a 2-2 two, two black zombie creature token with Decade. This card doesn't have to have any more text on it. <laughs> At the beginning of your upkeep, if you control three or more creature tokens, you may transform Stitcher into Poppet Factory. This is an artifact. Creature tokens you control lose all abilities and have base power and toughness 3-3. Three, three. At the beginning of your upkeep, you can transform it back to Poppet Stitcher if you want to. I mean, I just want to play this for the cool, like, Magecraft ability. I miss Magecraft. I mean, I guess we still have Prowess in standard, like, a, a little bit. You know, you play Monster Swift Sphere. But this really satisfies, like, the I want something big just for casting spells. You know what I mean? Like, I get a body? I get a two, can't block or whatever, but I get two, two. And I guess if I flip this over into the factory, then suddenly it can block, and it doesn't die at end of combat. It's, like, slightly a little bit bigger, so that's nice. So... Just a cool card, man. Like, a lot of people tried to make this work when it first came out, and it sucks. <laughs> it just wasn't a great card. But, again, I wonder now how we would like to play with this card. Again, we're down a sweeper in the format that everyone was playing before. You know, Meat Hook Masker, pretty good against this card, and a ton of other cards. We're pretty good against this card. But, hey, I guess now if they blow removal on your Poppet Stitcher like they always want to, you just that's less removal for the Shield Ridge you'll play next turn. You know what I mean? <laughs> So there's that, but I will say just like Shieldred, which has really given me a, 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 a di I look at cards differently now that Shieldred's been successful because just because a card doesn't do something amazing, the turn that it comes out, just because a card has to survive a turn to start doing cool stuff, doesn't mean that it's a bad card, you know, so Poppet Stitcher might have to really wait a turn to start doing cool stuff, but like the second turn it's in play. You might make two zombies off of it, like, pretty easily. You know, on a really good turn, you make three and flip it over. So, just a cool little card that I like a lot. And I feel like a lot of people had high hopes for. And then when it wasn't incredible immediately, people just completely forgot about it. So, here's your reminder. But for number two, let's take ourselves a look at Hive Heart Shaman right here. This is four mana, three and a green for a three five human shaman. Whenever it attacks, you may search your library for a basic land card that doesn't share a land type with a land you control, and then put that card onto the battlefield, shuffle your library. You can also pay five and a green to create a 1-1 one, one green insect creature token, and then put X plus one plus one counters on it, where X is the number of basic land types among lands you control, activate only as a sorcery. See, now that domain is like a thing in the format, I feel like we should probably see a hive heart shaman or two every now and again, but we just kind of don't. <laughs> it's kind of weird. I wish this had an ETB trigger. You know, if this was when it enters the battlefield, go get a land, put it into play, it would see a lot of play. It would just be like a better Quandrix Cultivator, which saw a fair amount of play when it was in standard, for a time at least. But uh, this, this is not, it doesn't look amazing. <laughs> but again, I'm reevaluating four drops that don't do anything when they come into play. <laughs> Suddenly, I don't know, card could be okay. A little bit of ramp uh, every single turn, and four mana for three, five worth of stats is not actually... The worst thing, I will say it dies to Shieldred because Shieldred has Death Touch. Uh, and it doesn't kill the Shelly, so it's probably just not playable. <laughs> That's how spikes evaluate things. Dies to Shieldred, doesn't kill her, not playable. Next slide. But no, I actually think this has a lot going for it. Even if it, like, dies to Shieldred in combat, it at least ramped for you once. And there's a possibility that just like Shieldred, it doesn't even have to attack. You know? You just, like, 
create six sixes. And that seems good enough, you know, like with domain nowadays, with domain nowadays, it's pretty easy to like fairly quickly get to making six sixes. And, you know, even if you're only making like four fours at the time, that still seems okay. But you know, if you're paying six mana, you probably have all the domain types. So you're just making huge dudes for like relatively cheap. I still think the card actually has a lot going for it. And it's like largely unexamined because nobody even knows that the thing exists. But probably most importantly, it's like a little beekeeper guy in like a cool, a cool little hat. I don't know. I like it. <laughs> I like that about him. But let's move on to numero uno. N the, the Primera entry. Is that correct? I think it's right. Anyway, it's Halo Fountain. This is three mana, two, and a white for an artifact. You can pay a white, tap it, and un untap a tapped creature you control. It's so hard to say. Create a 1-1 one, one green and white citizen creature token. You can also pay two white, tap fountain, and untap two dudes you control to draw a card. Or you can pay uh, five white mana, tap it, and untap 15 creatures you control to win the game. Now, you can win the game off of the Halo Fountain. It's, I've done it. It's pop, we've all done it at least once, right? And then we put the card away forever because that's all we want to do, especially as content creators. I know you. You're a content creator watching this. I'm just like you. I want a game with the Hallowed Fountain. And I was like, I'm done with this forever. Content. We just want content. But it turns out it's actually a sick little card, just like even without the win condition because the win condition is only going to happen. Like one out of every... I don't know, 45 games like it's, it's just not gonna happen if you have 15 dudes out you probably win the game anyway but hey if you have like rabble rousing or something like that it's kind of easy i think that's the name of the card that i'm thinking of the five mana white enchantment that when, like, whenever you attack you get that many one ones or whatever it is um with that in play it's actually fairly easy to get 15 dudes <laughs> it's not not too hard at all um so i feel like i have to bring that up but otherwise it's not too hard to tap a guy for mana and then untap him to create a dude. It's not too hard to have two dudes that are attacking and then you untap them to draw a card. And then later on that turn, you still draw a card off your wedding announcement because you attack with two guys. So you're just drawing all kinds of cards, you know. Um, it's an artifact. Again, there's probably something you can do with that. I'm pretty sure a lot of people that are watching this video, maybe not you, person who's going to comment and be like, I played Halo Fountain. I played Hallowed Fountain. I played Halo Fountain today. Not you, not you. <laughs> I'm sure there's going to be some people who are like, oh yeah, Halo Fountain. You, know, like, you were at one point aware of this card's existence, unlike, say, Laid to Rest, which I, you probably never knew that card was a, a thing. But at least this card I'm sure you were aware of at some point. But I need to remind you the card exists because it was never bad. I swear to you this card was never bad. But anyway, I think that's it. I, that's a, That took longer than I thought it was going to. <laughs> when, I first, when I first went through Arena, I was just like picking cards, you know, putting them into a new deck. Like, oh, I want to talk about that card. I want to talk about that card. And it ended up being 38 cards. So I, I cut a lot to get to this point. So I'm sure there's a lot of stuff that, that you know, you're going to say, oh, what about this card? What about that card? I probably considered it, but I still want to know what you think down there in the comment section. Like anything that I didn't include that you've been having a lot of fun with or like your spicy pick that's winning games or whatever. And like nobody knows about it. Like if you want to share your secret tech with us, I can see why you wouldn't. But if you want to let us know down there in the comment section, I want to know what you're winning games with that no one's playing. Also like and subscribe, I guess. Uh, if, for the cats, if nothing else, because that's a thing. People still like cats on YouTube, right? That's not like 2015 or anything. Oh, you be your own person, chicken. I love you. She jumped up here. You didn't get to see it between takes, but she loves me, I promise. <laughs> anyway, um, maybe maybe subscribe if you haven't done it yet, or resubscribe if you <laughs> if it's been a while since a while since you've been subscribed. I'm trying to get to 150 thousand this year. It's not going to happen, but if I put it out there into the world and I keep saying like we're going to get to 150 k this year, then maybe we'll get to 135. It could, it could happen. So subscribe if you haven't done it yet. I would like you to do that, obviously. I'm a YouTuber. Please, please, sub to my... No one does that anymore. But if you would, it would it would, it would, would make this old man... Feel, it would warm this old man's old heart. But anyway, I think that's about it for this one. <laughs> Just remember to let me know how you felt about it and what your picks are down there in the comments section. And I will see you again very soon for another Magic the Gathering video. That's what we do around here. But I'm dead from the place. Thanks for watching, Wizards. Spread love and be kind.